Mario, here we are in, in Crete, the Physics of Fine Tuning uh, Conference. I've, I've been following fine tuning for several decades, but in the past it's been philosophers, sometimes people interested in science and religion, debate, uh, but I've not seen before where everyone is serious physicists looking at fine tuning as a, a way of, 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 of advancing the science. Uh, uh, so if, if you look at this way of thinking about science and fine-tuning, uh, what's causing this, um, this kind of new approach? I think partly it has to do with um, insuccess <laughs> uh, in trying to explain certain things from fundamental principles. Yeah. Uh, you know, the physics of everything we see in the universe is determined by some laws, which we call the laws of physics or the laws of nature and by the values of some constants of nature, uh, like, you know, the strength of gravity, the strength of the electromagnetic force, mm -hmm. things like that. And even though we have made serious progress in understanding the physics and, you know, the laws of nature, it, it is still the case that we cannot, we don't have yet a theory to explain actually the values of these constants. And Maybe we will find one day a theory that will explain them all, you know, the so-called theory of everything. Uh, but we came to a realization uh, that maybe that's not possible, in fact. Uh, and maybe even the values of some of these constants um, are not actually determined from first principles, but rather they are accidental, so to speak. So once you get into that, you have to start wondering, so how come that, you know, if I look at this, it has a numerical value that is very close to that and so on, and that's where fine-tuning comes mm -hmm. in. Yeah, and so what we're saying is that we know what those constants are, sometimes to great precision, it's just that we don't know why it's that number. We know it has to be that number, that number works. Yes, yeah. we, we, we can measure those numbers. Yeah. I mean, we measure those right, numbers right. So, and we know their values, um, and we also know that those values uh, certainly have to be consistent with the fact that we are here. Which, namely, which is an odd thing in one sense. It sounds like a tautology. It sounds like it's a trivial thing. Obviously, it has to be, but that's this, this, uh, this area of fine tuning, anthropic principle. It's a very controversial thing. The question is, is it, is it a trivial comment? Because obviously, we have to be here to measure it, or is there some really deep meaning to it? Right. <laughs> so, you, you know, just to, to give you an example, I mean, you see, there was this astronomer, Johannes Kepler. He yeah. uh, was a great astronomer. Uh, he thought that he needs to find an explanation from first principles as to why there are six planets. Only six planets yeah. were known at right, this right. time. We now know that while the number of planets is determined by the laws of physics, the actual number is accidental. It depends on the particular conditions, you know, yeah. in the solar How you nebula. define planets. Today. Right, and so on. So. Um, so we understand now that there could be circumstances in which some uh, things that we otherwise think is fundamental are actually accidental. Mm. And so, so what role then does fine-tuning play, which fine-tuning indicates either uh, a, a predisposition to some sort of a, a natural simplicity among the constants or a tight range that would, uh, a tight or broad range, we don't know, that would allow complexity and therefore life to to evolve. Right, so so just a guy again is one of the examples. Um, it just so happens that if you look at the carbon atom, and we are carbon-based creatures yeah. and all life as we know it so far is based on carbon. Uh, carbon could not have formed in our universe if it weren't for some very near coincidence where beryllium plus another helium atom mm. when they combine the energy comes very close to an energy level of the carbon atom and that allowed carbon to form. So then you ask yourself, okay, why are those so close together? Because certainly if it wasn't the case, probably we wouldn't be here to talk about them. Yeah. So that's the kind of fine tuning, you know, that enters into the picture. How important do you think fine tuning is in advancing uh, the science in, in physics, particularly in cosmology, from the solar system that you've worked on to, um, to the evolution of the universe? Well, I actually worked on all of those, <laughs> okay, but okay. yes. Uh, but look, we don't know yet 
to what extent this is important. I mean, there is fine tuning, and then there is there are concepts that uh, now historically, even though the history is not very long, um, have become related to it. Concepts like the multiverse, the fact that. Uh, some people say that there isn't just our one universe, right. but there is a whole ensemble of universes right. and so on. So there are questions there which are important in relation to is there really a multiverse? How do we find out if there is a multiverse? Mm -hmm. And those are at some level could be treated by themselves without referring to fine-tuning. Or you could relate them to fine-tuning. Uh, so I would say the first part uh, is perhaps more important than the second. Hmm. But still, then, what you're saying, though, is fine-tuning adds another way, another uh, uh, mode or, or methodology to approach very complex questions. That's right. And you can judge whether it has a good impact or not, or secondary or primary, but, but it's just an, another tool in your toolkit. It, it, it's a tool, yes, but at the same time, if the tool would not actually be part of what we regard as the scientific method, then yeah. it will not be a useful tool. Right, and that's important because some people may have misappropriated fine-tuning to come to other conclusions that they might like, ha that, that they may have a bias towards theological For or example, other kinds. For yeah. example, yes. So generally, whether we talk about the multiverse or fine-tuning or concepts like this, uh, they still need to be within the general context of what we call the scientific method, which means you need to be able to make predictions, you need to be able to falsify the theory that you have. Otherwise, this is not a useful tool for science.